Hello everyone. Today I thought that we would make a ribbon skirt and it's just going to be a very basic simple ribbon skirt. There's many different varieties out there but we will be making this one right here. Uh, supplies you will need is some pins, scissors, a nice tape measure, you will need your fabric of course, uh, cut your fabric, elastic, the best kind to get is non-roll elastic, non-roll elastic, so it won't roll up on you when you're wearing it. Optional is some double folded extra wide bias tape, and I used that at the bottom here of mine. And one of my motivations for this was to make my hem a little nicer, but also because I couldn't find any white ribbon. So I used the bias tape. And if you have a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, then this works the best for cutting your fabric. But if not, it's not necessary. And of course you will need your choices of ribbon. So today I've used one inch double sided satin ribbon which is actually polyester so you can choose the colors that you want or you can go wider as well you could buy one and a half inch ribbon you will also need to have thread matching your material it's always good to have a neutral color like white and in my case i used black because my my most of my fabric was black but then even for the ribbons, I use the individual colors. So just for the very top of the ribbons, for the bobbin underneath, you, I didn't need to have colored bobbins. But for the top, I used, I tried to match my threads to my ribbons. Okay, so I'm also going to give you reference to a really good book at the end of the video for a contemporary style Métis ribbon skirt. Um, very good reference for that. So check out the end of the video for this book because it'll give you an option of a different style. All right, let's get started. Okay, hi everyone. Thought I would show you how to take your measurements for your fabric. Um, once you've chosen which fabric you're going to use, I did create this handout to help. And if you look on the very top, it says to take the following measurements you take your waist and so take one of these tape measures and you will wrap it around your waist and take the measurement and write it on this piece of paper in the waist spot. I am doing one for somebody smaller than me and uh, their waist was only a 27 so I'm going to write that in there. Then you'll take the tape measure again and put it around your hip section or whichever section on your body below your waist is the biggest. So, you know, sort of in between your hip and your waist area, whichever area there uses the most inches, that's the measurement you should put in spot B. Okay, uh, and, and on this person, their hip was a 37. So you're either putting your hip measurement or the largest part of your body below your waist. And then the C is the length of fabric you will need, which is from your waist to your ankle plus three inches. Now, of course, if you want to have a shorter skirt than that, 
then you can take the measurement wherever you want. If you just want it to go a few inches below your knee, take that measurement and add three inches because you will need extra inches for putting the elastic band in and for the hem at the bottom. So it'll take that measurement. And I just have to look and see what that was supposed to be again. On this person, it was 32 for length. And he was 35 for the length. Okay. So now we're going to find the width, of, the total width of fabric that we need to use. So uh, I found this chart online. I am going to put a link in for where I found this. If you want to do a more custom measurement, I will have instructions on the back of this form on how you can do it from scratch. But otherwise, you can pick your size on the chart here. This person that I'm doing was a size small. Uh, so that says 45 inches. Then you add two inches, which is basically for when we're putting the seams together on the side. And so we're gonna need a total width of 47. So that goes in the D spot. And something to note is the measurement should be bigger than your B. So this 47 is bigger than my B, which is 37. So that'll be fine. So that is gonna be, this 47 is how much fabric will go around the whole, the bottom of our skirt. So I'm just gonna do width and length. Now, if you look at this fabric that I have down here, it has a pattern on it. And it's clearly the pattern. This should be the top of my dress or skirt. This should be the bottom. So that means the direction will be going this way, which matches this fabric because I've got little faces on here. And if I turned it this way, and had the top up here, you could still do that, but your faces are gonna be sideways. So you have to decide based on your fabric, which direction it's gonna be, and then cut accordingly. So I want this to look like this. The top will be here, the bottom will be here. So that means my width is gonna go this way, and my length is gonna go this way. I need to have a 47 width, but with the fabric this way, and it only goes to 42. So I cannot do one cut for this 47 for the width. So what I have to do is divide this by two and that's 23.5, but I'm gonna round up and I'm gonna get a measurement of 24 for width. And then I will be making two panels of 24 for width. And I've got a little diagram here that shows my width needs to be 24 and my length needs to be 35. 24 width, 35 for length. Where 35 inches is because I need to cut the length to 35. So the first thing you might want to do is cut off this little white strip on the side. If I'd been able to use my fabric this way, I would leave the white strip and I would use it as part of my, when I roll this over to put the elastic in, I would just leave that there. But because I can't use the fabric this way and I have to use it this way, I'm just gonna cut this off. Because I currently have this fabric all on, I think I have about six meters of this, I don't know where I'm going to cut to, so I'm just going to leave this white line on here for the purpose of the demo and cut it off after.
Okay, so if you have the fabric chalk or, or fabric pen, I would use that, but I'm lucky because this has a lot of patterns on that I can match up. So if I was supposed to go to there, I can see that it's just going to be above the bear's nose. So I can line this ruler up just above the bear's nose. And then I can see that it's just below this one's eyes. So then I can go like that. And then I can just try to cut along there. Now the best thing, I do have a rotary cutter, but unfortunately I do not have a table sized mat. Um, that is the best way to cut fabric because you can just go and you can use this ruler, line up your ruler and just do one swift cut, super easy. I don't have a big enough mat to do that and I don't want to wreck my table. So I'm going to be cutting with scissors. Okay, so now I should have one panel and now I can cut off this edge. Okay, so I cut off the little white strip here and then you'll just do the exact same thing and cut yourself a second piece exactly the same size which I've done. So now I've got my two pieces. So I borrowed my mom's cutting mat, which is just a big mat here that you put down on your table and then I've got a cutter like this and this is the other way that you can cut and it makes a lot nicer of a cut. Put a fair amount of pressure down when you're doing it. And you can see it makes a very easy nice cut. Okay, so I'm looking at my ribbon choices now, and I think I've narrowed it down to these four colors. And kind of what helped me make my decision is I looked through the thread that I have and uh, found thread that matched the colors quite well. The only one that was a little bit off was this purple. But you don't have to have colored thread when you're sewing your ribbons on. But if you have it, why not? It'll blend in nicely. Otherwise, my material is black, so I could just use black thread on all of the ribbons and it would be just as fine. And um, so I'm cutting it out with just a little bit extra on both sides. And don't forget you need to cut two of each color because you have two panels to do. And if you're doing this in some sort of workshop where you don't have much time, I would probably recommend only doing three colors of ribbon. Um, if you're a beginner and you don't have much experience with sewing, I would just maybe use three ribbons instead of four. And I have decided that on mine, I am going to, because I saw this on somebody else's video, I'm going to use this double folded extra wide bias tape. It's, it's going to create like a white ribbon look. And probably I'm going to move all these ribbons down closer to the white one. So it'll just look like it's all part of one. And um, as I showed before, this opens up. And then you can put that in there and sew it on for your hem. But what I'm going to do first... So I'm going to get my iron and fold about a quarter of an inch under to make it a little bit easier and then I'm going to put the bias tape on. And something else I discovered works really nicely is flat irons. If you don't have an ironing board or a traditional iron anymore, um, this is great because it has the two plates. You don't need to have an ironing board. So you can make yourself a little quarter inch fold on the bottom and then you can use your hot whatever this is called this hair iron and you can go all the way around to make yourself a crease now I don't have it turned on right now so it's not actually pressing anything but this is good if you're doing a workshop because a lot of people you could ask people to bring these and then you don't need a ton of irons and people don't have to wait in line to use an iron and then they can do this and also it 
It's really good for if you've got some ribbons that are a bit wrinkled, you can press your ribbons really easily using this. Just go along and press your ribbons and uh, take out the wrinkles that way. Okay, so let me get this set up. I'm going to start gluing these ribbons down now. Uh, and then after that, I will start sewing the ribbons on. Okay, so I've taken some pins and folded about a quarter inch under. And now I'm going to use my little iron here. Um, it is easier if you have a real iron to press down. But I think I can make this work with the pins still in it, and then I'll take the pins out after and do a completely from one end to the other. And I can't remember if I mentioned, but it is a good idea to wash your fabric before you cut it because it does shrink about an inch, or at least the stuff that I have here shrunk about an inch. And then if you don't wash it first, what happens is, is when you sew these ribbons on, the ribbons won't shrink, but the fabric will shrink a little bit. And then your ribbons are going to kind of buckle a little bit and it won't look as nice. So you can either A, hand wash, I mean hand dry your skirts and then you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to be able to put your skirts in the dryer, then pre-wash your fabric first. I actually cut mine out first and then I pre-washed it. And that's how I noticed that it shrunk by a inch. So you might not want to do your hem until the very end uh, if you're going to check to make sure the length is okay. But I already know mine's going to be probably a little bit shorter than what I wanted because mine shrunk. So I'm going to do my bias tape here on the bottom at the same time that I do my ribbons. But you might want to leave your hem till later if you want to make sure, because otherwise you might have to undo your hem and then if, if your dress is too long, then you might have to hem it some more later. And with my ribbons here, this actually works really nicely for this because I can iron my ribbons both sides at the same time. If they're a bit wrinkled. So I'm liking that. That's very easy to do this. Okay, so let me pull out these pins and then I will go all the way across one more time and I'll be right back. Okay, I removed the pins. I'm just going to do this a little bit stronger here. Okay, and now, I guess I can turn this off. I'm going to take my bias tape and I'm going to put it along the bottom here. I'll leave a little bit sticking out that I can cut off later. And I think, I mean, I probably could iron this again even though I just turned it off, but it should still be warm. But I'm going to now pin this here so it won't move, which will make it easier for me to sew this on. Okay, so I've added a few pins on the bottom just to keep it on until I sew it because it is thicker than the ribbons so I'm not 100% sure just gluing bias tape would hold uh, until I get it in the machine. So now I'm going to figure out my spacing on my ribbons and I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start with about an inch from the top of the white bias tape. So start lining this up here I 
Okay, and then I think what I'm going to do is get a big long ruler, a ruler here. Like that, an inch above. That should tell me exactly where I'm placing this ribbon. Okay, and then so now I'm going to put glue on my ribbon, which I'm not sure you're going to be able to see me because I have to go way over here to do it. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the ribbon. I don't know if you can see me, but that's what I'm doing. Just putting glue on the back of the ribbon. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this down where I have the marking of the ruler. I'm leaving a longer edge of ribbon at the other side because if I start sewing here this is where the ribbon will get pushed this way so I want to make sure that I have I want to make sure that I have extra on the other end in case I mean sorry it's going to sort of get pulled this way as I sew so some of the ribbon might get pushed over this way so I want to make sure that I have enough extra on the other end I got to position this an inch, an inch up. You can space your ribbons however you like and wherever you like. Okay, so now I'm going to mark this right here with the ruler again so I can take this up and glue it. Okay, so let's put this down. Right about there. Next, we will be going to the sewing machine to sew these on. Okay, so I was correct in that my I didn't put enough glue on the orange ribbon, so it has fallen off. But I decided I'm just going to sew this on, which is what I should have done before. Uh, do the hem bias tape section before gluing on the other ribbons. Um, so I'm going to do that now. And I think I'll use a zigzag stitch on this. And hopefully those of you doing this already know how to use a sewing machine, but if you don't and you figured out how to thread it, I've got white right now because this is white. And the bobbin is is white because the, it goes through on the it's the other side. So I got white and white. You always hang on to the threads when you first start. Pull those tight, and then you sew a little bit, and then you press the button that reverses your machine, and you go back a little bit. This is to help it from coming undone. So yeah, I'm just gonna go along here finish this and then I'll be able to try the orange one again with a different glue different glue stick pull my pins out before I get to the needle. When I get to the end, I reverse again, go forward a bit more, then you lift up and you hang on to the knob on the side of your machine and wiggle it so the needle moves up and down until the string comes out a certain length. So that way you don't have to re-thread it. If you cut it off when it's too short, your needle will come out of everything that you've thread and then you've got to re-thread again. Okay, so when you start putting your ribbons on, I was measuring mine an inch apart as I was gluing them. 
I just want to point out that the first couple of ribbons I accidentally was using this one that says restick and I, the ribbons all fall off right when you take it to the sewing machine and it's a real pain. So don't use the restick. Just use a regular glue stick. I'm using this one and now my ribbons are on here really well for when I take it over to the sewing machine, they're not all gonna start falling off on me. Please just pin down your ribbons if you don't wanna bother with the glue sticks. But the glue stick is nice as long as you have a good glue stick. So you may have to test that out. Make sure you have a couple different glue sticks and find one that works for you. Okay, so I'm ready to sew on some of my ribbons now. I've already put my, sewed my bias tape on, on the edge. So now I'm ready to start my ribbons. I have put an orange thread in for the top and I'm just leaving the bobbin color white because the, the underside of my fabric is actually more white than black. So I'm just gonna leave the under thread to be white and then I've got the top thread to be orange. And now I'm gonna set my machine to a zigzag stitch and we'll sew this. I don't know how much of this you can see because all right so now I'm going to position my the foot so it's right in the very middle the top edge of this is right in the very middle so that when I do the zigzag stitch it kind of goes right over top the edge here a little bit on here and a little bit on here to hold it down okay and i'm very happy with the new glue it's holding these down perfectly i was a little bit worried there when i had the wrong glue stick so remembering to hang on to your edge or the the strings both the top and the bottom one just for a few seconds when you get started and Go slowly because you want to make sure you stay in the right position. I'm going to have to go back a few stitches to make it stay solid. Okay, and then just continue slowly watching that you're in the middle there and also keeping your fabric flat as you go. I just want to kind of can't show you until I'm done what it looks like. Let me see if I can pull this this way a little bit so I can show you. Okay, so there we go with the stitches. I have it going right along the edge, and on my machine it's a zigzag, and I have the length set at two. And hopefully now pulling that over did not skew my line here. So just keep an eye on the, your middle. And go all the way to the end. When you get to the end, you can do a little back section and then go forward. And then what I am going to do is flip this around and we're going to be sewing, sewing this together anyways. So uh, the two pieces will be sewn together. So what I'm going to do is just do a stitch along here because I'm going to be cutting this anyways. So. This is just strictly for me to get to the other side. Okay. So now you reposition your other side right in the middle again. And I cheated by going across there, but you most people would probably cut their ends off and then restart again so when you restart this side even though I cheated and went across I'm still gonna do my back stitch because in case I do end up cutting the fabric down here 
at the end where the ribbon is it might cut some of those stitches and then um, then, it's, then it's not going to be secure so okay so I'm just going to do this now all the way to the end and then I'm going to work on my next color so I'm going to switch to a blue a blue thread and continue on the next one's purple for me and the next one after that's red for me and when I have all four of these on we can begin the next step of sewing our sides together you on and then when you get to your second piece you should actually lay them together so like when you get to the orange one for example you can match it up match the ends up glue it down so it matches with this one and same with the blue so that your ends on both sides will be exactly the same because eventually we're going to be sewing these two pieces together and we want it to form a circle all the way around and we want this one to match the same as that one underneath so see I still have the red one okay so it actually makes it a lot easier when you're doing your second ribbons because now you're more concerned about making sure that these mat the ends match up and so I'm gonna put this one down here and you know I'm not as concerned about the distance in between because I really want to make sure that when this is sewed together it's gonna match with the other side so In this case, I think that this is still, this is just under an inch somehow. So somehow things have shifted a little bit on me, but it's better to have your ends lined up at least anyways. Okay, so I've sewn on my four rows of ribbon on each panel. I've got my one panel and my second panel here and now we're going to do our side seams okay so our next step now that the ribbons are sewed down is you put your two pieces um, together inside out and match your ribbons on the sides and then put pins in all along the edging here because you're going to now make your seam and you're going to sew the two sides together i'm going to use a straight stitch first and then I might do a zigzag beside it I have a serger it's actually my mom's serger and if you have one that's the best thing to do because you can actually do your stitch and have it cut off the excess ribbon and everything all in one step and it makes a really nice finish but since I am doing this as a beginner and only having a sewing machine this is the way you could do it you just do a straight stitch along here and then a zigzag beside it and then you can trim off your excess by hand okay so first thing to remember to do is check your thread and right now I've got black in both the bobbin and the top so that especially since I'm doing it inside out um, the bobbin now is going to be the the outer and the top is going to be the inside usually when the bobbins on the on the inside doesn't matter so much but because we're doing this in reverse uh, you might want to have your bobbin color the same as your fabric which mine's black so that's why I'm doing that um, another thing make sure you switch over to straight stitch on your machine because we were using zigzag for the ribbons and yeah so then just you know, sew a straight sh seam here, going down, remove the pins as you go, and I had a little bit of trouble with my red ones matching. 
So I'm just going to fix this and then um, be back in a moment. Okay, now I've done my one row of stitch here. I am now going to switch back to zigzag again and do a zigzag stitch right on the other, like on the inside edge of where I did the straight stitch just to finish this off just a little bit more and make it a, your seam a little bit stronger. And I will go all the way down to the end on that and be back in a moment. Okay, so now that you've sewed up both sides, you can come to the edge and trim off the little excess ribbons and stuff. You can trim all the way along here up to where you did your zigzag stitch. And then you'll be able to turn it back inside out. Okay, so I flipped it right side out again. And it doesn't look too bad so far. It's not perfect by any means. Uh, these could have matched up a little bit better. But I'm this side matched up better than the other side. But I am very happy with this so far. So all that's left now is to put your elastic in. And what you need to do is do a little quarter inch hem here. So actually we need to turn it inside out again. Your elastic. So you'll be taking one of these elastics and figure out exactly how much you need to wrap over this elastic to make like a little pocket that you can push the elastic in. So you will measure how much that is. And probably be before you start doing your elastic, because this edge is already starting to fray a little bit here, iron a little teeny hem here iron this and then do a little uh, running stitch across there to keep this little edge there and then you will figure out how much to fold over so that your elastic can fit in there and then you will put a small line of sewing across here and you have to remember that your skirt's all one now so this will be like all one piece you have to leave yourself a little gap so that you can push, hopefully my head's not been in the way the whole time. So you can push this in through the little hole that you don't sew. And then how you take your measurement for the elastic, but there was many ways to take this measurement. And on some videos I watched, they used your waist measurement which was A, that's how much elastic to, to use. And you can add like about a thumb's worth, which will be about an inch for when you sew it together. And that'll be your waistband. Now that's if you like to have things loose. And for me, I do like to have things loose. So I will probably just use my waist measurement plus an inch. And also for me, I know when I sit down, everything expands. So this will hopefully not be too tight for me. If you like things tight, I did see other videos that say to take your waist measurement and subtract three inches because obviously elastic stretches, right? So it'll stretch for you. So feel snug. So it just depends on how you want to have it. If you want it tighter or looser. Okay, so just pin yourself a quarter of an inch all the way around the top. Now that it's sewn together, you're going to have this edge here and you can just flip over this here when you're sewing it. And you can pin it down and then iron yourself a nice crease with either using something like this. Iron is easier, of course and then go to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around here and you're going to do the same thing on the bottom piece there okay you won't be able to see but i have sewn this but it's black thread so you can't see but i've got this little edge sewed 
And now you're going to be taking your elastic. You're going to measure around your waist how much elastic you will need. And what's going to happen is you're going to make a little encasing for this to slide in. So basically you're going to be measuring you're going to measure how wide this is, your elastic, okay, it's an inch, inch wide. So I'm probably going to do an inch and like a quarter of a encasing. So I will probably measure an inch, fold over an inch and a quarter but I want my quarter to be where the line that I sewed, the line that I sewed was right there. So my inch and a quarter. Um, so that you'll be able to fit this elastic in this little encasing. So you'll measure that around. You will sew it all the way around, but you have to remember to leave yourself an opening because you're gonna need the opening to slip the elastic in. And if you put a safety pin on the end of this elastic, when you push it through, it really helps because then you can pull the safety pin from inside here. Okay, so I've finished sewing myself a one and a quarter casing here. And I luckily I remembered to leave myself a space here so I started sewing there and ended here leaving myself a gap I've got my elastic here now with a safety pin and I'm gonna put it in this little gap and now I'm gonna push my elastic all the way through here and you can just use your pin on the end and gather it and then pull and then push it down some more. Hang on to the end of the safety pin and pull. And then you can just keep doing this all the way around. Push safety pin in further and further. Hang on to the end of the safety pin and pull. That one didn't work because I didn't have a good enough grab on it. Gotta hold that safety pin tight. And then pull this. And eventually when you get to the end, it's gonna get tighter and it'll start making like little puckers. And so yes, I do this all the way around. Okay, so once you've pushed the elastic through the top of your skirt, you'll have two pieces that will stick out here. And what you'll need to do now is take these pins off and you can sew these two pieces together. I would do quite a few zigzag stitches in here to make sure that this is nice and tight. And then you'll be able to finish putting it through into here. And then when that's in there, you're going to sew up the gap and then you're done. If you want, once you've put your two pieces of elastic together, actually, uh, actually you could pin these together first if you want, and then try on the dress to make sure that it's the tightness you want um, before sewing up all these gaps. And there. Yeah. One last step and we're done. Okay, here we go. I did have to undo my elastic after I tried it on to make it tighter. So I do recommend not sewing up your gap until you give it a shot. See if it's tight enough for you. Here is my top section now all done. And got ribbons all the way around both sides. It's 
very pretty turned out very nice so there you go have fun making yourself a ribbon skirt so here's the book I was telling you about here's another uh, way of making a Métis ribbon skirt it is a contemporary style one and it uses two colors instead of just one fabric but the book is awesome it uses two colors of fabric so you kind of have like a one color fabric and then you choose a patterned fabric for the bottom part of the skirt and then it'll be the same supplies you have your thread colors matching your ribbons and your elastic and it looks like the book walks you through everything like it is so wonderful I can't really I'm you know for copyright issues I don't want to like stop on anything here but it really goes through every step and shows you how to do everything it's like a really good book so I bought this book from the Métis Trading Post website oh there you go this is what the the skirt will look like and uh, there's also a video that comes with it and it they have a video that explains it as well so if anybody's looking for a more contemporary style um, I would recommend getting this book there's the authors I'll try to put a link where I purchased it in my description Just seeing if there's any more details on here Looks like it came from a publisher in Saskatoon. So, just wanted to point out that this is a very good resource. And uh, I will be trying this one soon myself. Okay, take care everyone.